doing good, Tim. Just keep moving! Taylor Ripley, hold on! What makes Aliens such a great game is, I would say, probably the way it approaches fear. It's about being alone, it's about being scared, it's about creating a world which keeps the believability throughout. Like, you're never questioning, oh, I'm just on a set, I'm just in this place, I'm just playing a game. It's like, no, you're scared as hell of this one thing, you're not killing hundreds of aliens throughout the course of the game, thus negating any fear you had of them, you're battling one big alien who will mess you up if you don't do it right. It really feels like you're in a fully realized interpretation of those classic movies. Um, and it's, it's, the, it's the keys on the keyboard, it's the way that the walls and the buildings look. I mean, it's, it's every little minutia in the game has been tweaked to just sort of create this cohesive whole that just, mm, it's so good. Its stealth is really effective, you use it throughout the entire game, it's really well implemented, and you get to use that stealth basically to solve puzzles. That's the second thing I love. I really love the idea that you can approach a situation and go, okay, there's a way to get through this without that guy killing me, now I gotta figure it out. So those two things together are really thoughtfully done and they make it really kind of a brain teaser that's really fun to parse. I love how you really feel like you are in the movie sandwiched between Alien and Aliens. Um, the environment is so comprehensive and it's it's just amazing. You really feel like you're there. Um, I played on the world's tiniest television and I was still completely immersed in the universe. So I find in games the most effective use of horror is, uh, is horror of the unknown or, or being teased with things that you can't see. And so in Alien Isolation, when you think you, oh, you think you maybe hear the alien wrestling around in the vents or something, or you, you're pretty sure there's an enemy waiting for you around the next corner, like that, that drama that plays out in your mind is, is usually far more effective than just throwing a bunch of scary looking monsters at you on the screen. And I think Alien Isolation, the restraint that it shows, it uh, really makes it that much more terrifying. You know that feeling when you're being chased and you don't look at the person chasing you? but you feel their presence at your back and you know like they're closing in on me. You don't, you don't know it for a fact, but you feel it. You don't see the alien all the time. He's just, you know, he's there and you feel that he's there. And that's what makes it so scary and so great. Every moment of Alien Isolation is deeply tense and it never lets up. You're spending all this time basically by yourself in this big empty room, but you know, you know for a fact that there are violent, not even just people, but things all around that are going to come for you. So you spend the entire time afraid that they're just gonna jump out of nowhere and get you. Happened to me, I was wandering through a room and here comes the alien through a vent, pulling me into the ceiling. And I was like, oh, okay, he could get me literally anywhere. With so many games all about empowering the player, making you stronger and stronger as it goes on, Alien is about taking that away. It's about making you defenseless at all times or, or leaving you with so few options like that running is your only option in most cases. That tangible fear is held throughout the entire game. It's very true to Ridley Scott's idea of aliens, which is a very man-made world of researchers and cyborgs and all this. It's not a land of soldiers. It's just humans in man-made ships facing something completely unknown and terrifying that they can't figure out. 
I think if you go back and you look at like Alien vs. Predator or like some of those other, there's like a 2D alien beat em up arcade game like those. Sure, they had aliens in them and they had dudes with pulse rifles and stuff, but it was a completely different style and feel than what you got in those movies. And with Alien Isolation, the entire game is just so oppressive all the time. Like you're just alone and trapped and isolated in this like space station with this thing hunting you and it just it just weighs on you at all points throughout the game. Much like the the sort of threat of the alien weight on you when watching the, the classic movie. They did a really good job um, with the environments and the and the ships. Like um, I had to go back and watch the first movie again after it, it made me really nostalgic the details, the buttons, the noises, the lights, the flashing, all of it you feel like you are on a ship is so authentic to what was created in Ridley Scott's masterpiece. They took Amanda Ripley and made her relevant to the Alien universe because we kind of hear about her in Alien 1 and we kind of hear about her in Alien 2, but she's not actually that important as far as we know. So Alien Isolation takes Amanda and makes her relevant to the story while bringing in those elements that her mother experienced of the loneliness and isolation of being out in space alone and terrified of this thing. And it takes that feeling and context from the movies and puts them all together in a new package that's really interesting to experience. So I know a lot of people are really terrified by the working Joes and alien isolation and just sort of their dead soulless eyes, but in terms of scariest, creepiest enemies, I'm just gonna have to give it up to the alien. I mean, it's the absolute terror that is always in the back of your mind. The working Joes can sort of be dealt with and avoided, but like whenever the alien's on the screen, you know you're, if you make one wrong move, you're just gonna get obliterated, if it hasn't just killed you instantly. You know, as soon as you see it, like hiding in the locker and like, you really feel like you're, you're just like holding your breath because you don't want this thing to, to hear you breathing. And I found myself sitting there, not breathing, not saying anything. I don't even have the motion tracker for the PS4 or anything, and I still just didn't want to move because I felt like any movement I would make, this alien was going to come and eat my face. The alien is not the scariest. The androids are the scariest. The androids, full stop. Like, the alien's scary and all, but he's scary in a kind of like, oh, here's this big creepy alien. Of course, that's gonna be terrifying. The androids, you start out with them being nice to you, but you definitely get a feeling like something's gonna go wrong here. Sometimes they're friendly, sometimes they're not. And it's just that imposing sense of dread that they're going to attack you. And when they finally do, you can't kill them. Like I shot one, for instance, and he goes, ow, now it's my turn. My turn? No, we're not, we're not taking turns. I'm trying to kill you. The working Joes and their extra bit of skin, the skin flap that covers up where their, their neck should be. Who thought? consumers would want to buy an android that looks like that. Just make them look like Star Wars droids, then I wouldn't get nightmares, okay? Can you do that? Thanks. All right, so maybe I'm kind of a wuss, but my favorite moments in Alien Isolation are when things like aren't happening or trying to kill me. Like if I know, if I know that I'm safe, at least for a moment, then you know, and I can sort of take a, a sigh of relief. Those are actually kind of my favorite moments, but maybe it's because I just play the game like tensed up like this every single moment. I really did love this moment where I was going down a hallway and there was an android there and I was being impatient and I wasn't waiting for him to kind of not be looking at me. So I darted into this other room and I heard him say like, oh, I better check this out. I'm like, oh no. So I started to walk really quickly to try to get away from him. And because I was going so quickly, the alien in the vent over my head heard me, dropped down, grabbed me and pulled me inside and I was dead, which sucks. But I definitely was like, okay, I messed up. Let's try that again. My favorite moment was when I realized I can't play this game the way I intended to. You know, I wanted I wanted my Amanda Ripley to be a pacifist because she doesn't seem like a violent person. 
but I realized there was no way I was going to survive this ordeal without killing a few people along the way. And the fact that the game pushed me to stop, you know, reloading checkpoints, reloading saves, and just accept the fact that I needed to kill to survive, that's pretty incredible. My favorite moment in Alien, it's kind of funny, because it's, it's more personal than anything, but, so I'm colorblind. And there's a point in the game where they're like, okay, I need you to cut this wire and cut this wire, and, th and these other two wires. I cut two of the wires, and then all the lights go red. And she's like, oh no, I can't, I can't tell which wires to cut because everything's red. And I'm like, wow, this is probably the worst time to be colorblind. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, I feel your pain. You know, I think the first time I saw the alien, there was just this unnatural, just thrill of, I finally found it. Cause it takes about two hours for me before I saw him. So it was all of this anti anticipation building up to see the alien and then you see him and then the game just changes after that and it's never the same and yeah i don't i don't like him but i do like him he's kind of like the thing i like to hate Thanks very much for watching this video, and if you want to see more great videos, go to GamesRadar's YouTube page right over there, or go to GamesRadar.com and check out all the badass content right there.